landed at, he was 8.30 at night. The beach had already been taken. So actually when Robert's here, uh, it's safe. There's no fighting, they're not being uh, mortared. Uh, so this part of it for him would have been uh, really relatively easy and very quickly he was marching to the nearest town, which is Banville, just up the road. Just to get a perspective of here, uh, if I look to my right, um, Gold Beach is down to my right, so far as you can see down there. Uh, Gold Beach was where the 50th uh, Division, British Division was. Uh, and sweeping round, all the way around this beach, so this is all Juno Beach we're looking at, sweeping all the way around here into the sunshine, uh, is, is Sword Beach. And at Sword Beach, the 3rd British Infantry Division were placed. We've just moved up from the beach here now to show you uh, this gun emplacement where the Germans would have been with a full view of the beach really. Uh, as much as I was saying Juno was a great success, it still had massive tragedy and it was still uh, so many soldiers lost their lives, in particular the Royal Winnipeg uh, Division. Rifle Division, they, they were absolutely shot to pieces and 128 fatalities on that day. And it was here where they'd have been trying to rush and gun emplacements like this had such an open view of the soldiers coming from the landing craft in the sea. Uh, just they would have been picking them off so easily and all the beaches would have experienced something like that. Hence the horrible loss of life, say for Roberts all over in the evening and when he came through here uh, it had been taken. Having said that about Robert, um, he actually he suffered the worst weather in the boat and the story in, in the war diary, his story is very much one of horrendous seasickness, they got an absolute soaking, uh, the weather was really abysmal and they were ever so pleased to get out of it and get on dry land and spend the night uh, just up the road. We're in another really significant part of the five days that Robert uh, was in Normandy and just to uh, get a perspective of where we are, if you look at the trees behind me, the line of the trees there, sadly we can't see it but over the trees is Juno Beach. We know Robert landed on Juno Beach on the 6th of June and we know he, he would have marched pretty much zigzagging a bit through some villages and through to here where we're standing now. Here would be the first time landing on French soil that he got involved in the fighting. And the fighting was just outside a place called Douvre la Deliverande, where there is a, a radar station. Uh, you can see, it's quite a sizable site. You can see the bunker that the Germans would have uh, been in. And I'm just gonna turn round and you'll actually see one of the five significant radars they've had on the French coastline is here and this is what they were after the black watch were trying to, to take this uh, with some difficulty there were um, many thousands of Germans here you were kind of lucky or unlucky where the Germans were when you were from D-Day this was a bad spot um, and they were being hammered the black watch because the Canadians were around couldn't take it the black watch arrived here unfortunately it's a horrible part of the story but Roberts and his battalion when they got here uh, were fighting very quickly and some tanks were involved in it and it turned out that just over the other side here in the wood um, were what they thought were the Germans firing on them and they were firing back. It soon became apparent that actually a Canadian force were firing so both Canadians and British troops were firing on each other in the chaos that was uh, ensuing. So 
there's a really horrible part here and when they realized that was happening obviously they did something about it but the germans were still too strong here so by the end of the day uh, roberts and blackwatch re re um, retreated back to a place called uh, i think it's benny schumer so over to the west where i'm now looking not very far a mile or two at most and they basically then got the two ships that were near here on, off Juno Beach. Uh, they got them and the RAF to blast this place. So rather than getting the infantry to come and take it, they just shelled it and the place was uh, devastated. So that was Robert's story up to here. And, and after here, we now know he went towards Pegasus Bridge, uh, across Pegasus Bridge, where the Germans were again in strength on the other side of the canal on the river. And uh, on the 11th of June, lost his life. We're now standing on the uh, site of where Robert spent his last night. Uh, over my left hand shoulder, you'll be able to see Chateau saint Um The 5th Battalion of the Black Watch had, we know, arrived at Juno Beach on the 6th of June. Uh, he'd made his way eastwards across from there, attacked a radar station unsuccessfully. They actually had to blast that with the shells from the boats from the ships out in the sea uh, remarkably on the air aeroplanes so they struggled to uh, to fight through there they carried on moving eastwards towards pegasus bridge pegasus bridge was taken on the first day of d-day remarkably by the sixth airborne division but they found it really really hard to, to keep hold of the bridge and um, the black watch robert were part of being moved over to the bridge to fight back the germans were basically trying to push everybody back towards the sea. So he crossed the bridge, they weren't fighting on the bridge, he crossed it and came into certain villages south of Pegasus Bridge, which is pretty much where we are now. This is a place called Breville, just a few hundred yards up uh, from where we're standing here. Uh, the night of the 10th of June, Robert and the rest of the 5th Battalion Black Watch stayed in the grounds of this chateau behind me. Uh, peaceful looking now, but wouldn't have been then. Uh, on the morning of the 11th of June, at 4.30 in the morning, um, they, the, the Black Watch left their territory here, left the grounds of the chateau, and basically moved in the northerly direction to where we're now looking. There are little trees, there's woods here now, but this would have been open ground, and it was 500 yards from here 
to the crossroads at the village of Breville and at the crossroads unbeknown to the soldiers uh, hidden in these incredibly thick hedges they call them bocage over here um, really really heavy thick hedges you can't see through them and the Germans had machine gun emplacements and mortars all lined up so horribly Robert and over 200 of the Black Watch uh, were absolutely massacred in that hour of moving up the hill and of that 200 plus 110 actually lost their lives and we know that Robert was one of them so it's been very moving today to go to see where Robert was buried it's been an enormous um, tribute paid by the school and Brenda and the family to be together uh, the television wanted to know the story it's been so really lovely and I think it's nice now that we're able to stand very close to where Robert spent his, his last hours so this is equally a really special place to think of Robert.